Yes, one, two, three. Very good. Well, thank you all for coming this evening to the city council meeting. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. And then our, my first order of business is to read a proclamation. If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for our invocation this evening uh, brought by Pastor Flanoy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father and kind God, we come before you with humble hearts and lifted spirits, thanking you for your many, many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. You have us new mercies every day, some that we're so undeserving of. But we ask you to fall fresh on us on tonight on our mayor and our city council, that they will make decisions that will honor you and benefit the citizens of Bonner Springs. And when we are done here, please be in the mechanics of our vehicle that we will arrive safely and let us find everything that we left just as we left it. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever we'll pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. One of my high honors are uh, bringing proclamations on behalf of the city. And our proclamation this evening is for National Police Week. You want to come up, Chief, too? Please? Ha ha. Thanks, <laughs> No, you're fine. It's, uh, I'm very proud of both of you. And the proclamation reads, whereas there are more than 800,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the Bonner Springs, Kansas Police Department, and whereas since the first recorded death in 1786, more than 23,000 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and been killed in the line of duty, including Leroy Dameron and Maureen Kelly Murphy, members of the Bonner Springs Police Department. And whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., and whereas 619 new names of fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 472 officers killed in 2021 and 147 officers killed in previous years. And whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty will be honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 34th Candlelight Vigil on the evening of May 13th, 2022. And whereas the Candlelight Vigil is part of National Police Week, which will be observed this year, May 11th through 17th, and whereas May 15th is designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families, and U.S. flags should be flown at half staff. And now, therefore, I, Jeff Harrington, Mayor of Bonner Springs, Kansas, do hereby proclaim May 11th through 17th, 2022, as National Police Week, and encourage all citizens to remember those individuals who gave their lives for our safety and express appreciation to those who continue to dedicate themselves to make Bonner Springs a safer place in which to live. Thank you all very much. I, I talked to you about it earlier yep. today, Mayor, but we've got a couple things going on with the Bonner Springs Police Department and for the memorials of the two officers that were mentioned today that had died in the line of duty. Um, mm -hmm. One, uh, there's a future Eagle Scout that was uh, conducting his Eagle Scout project this year, and he has actually created a memorial garden at the police station for Officer Murphy and Officer Dameron. We'll be dedicating that memorial this year on the 19th, which is Thursday of Police Week. I'll have more times and everything once I, because there's members of Officer Murphy's families that are still in the area. Um, I'm coordinating with them and then with the, the Eagle Scout to come out and we'll do a dedication then. Um, once we get the times uh, for that, we'll put that out. And then also we've been working on a project with the police department to submit a proposal to the city council, which once I've completed all the steps and requirements for that, I'll be submitting to you guys for a recommendation for doing some memorial ways 
on Oak Street and Morris Street, which are the two streets in which the officers have uh, lost their lives on. So that'll be more to come for council. And um, once we get the information for the Memorial Garden, we'll put that out. And that way, the community is more than welcome to join us uh, when we do the dedication of that to the, the city. So mm -hmm. thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you guys do. Moving right along to our uh, first item of business, which is our con uh, consent agenda. Public comments. Oh, pu public comments, yes. Uh, if there's anyone here this evening that would like to address the city council about any items not on tonight's agenda, you're more than welcome to stand and address the city council. Seeing none, we will now move ahead to the consent agenda. The consent agenda uh, includes the claims for city operation and minutes of the April 25th, 2022 city council meeting. Anything to be pulled by the citizens? Staff? Questions or concerns from the council? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Mayor, make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, moved by Mr. Thompson and seconded by Mr. Shannon. Vote, please. Voting on a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Stevens? Yes. Kip? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Wood? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Long? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. New business this evening, the first of which starts with the presentation and acceptance of the 2021 audit. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tilly LaPlante, Finance Director. Um, we have with us tonight Sean Gordon. He's the principal with Gordon CPA and, and uh, performed the 2021 audit this year, so he'll make that presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As uh, Tilly said, my name is Sean Gordon with Gordon CPA. We performed the 2021 audit of the city, so I'll go through that um, audit report that you've seen in your agenda packet, um, kind of section by section, and explain what you're looking at. So um, starting with pages one through three, this is called the Independent Auditor's Report. We audited the city and the Bonner Springs Library together for the 1231-21 calendar year end. Um, this report is a little bit different than what you've seen in the past. The city switched to the GAAP waiver or the Kansas Regulatory Basis of Accounting for the 2021 um, fiscal year, financial year. Um, so, like I said, it looks just a little bit different than what you've seen over the past few years. Um, on the third paragraph down on page one is uh, titled the um, Unmodified Opinion on the Regulatory Basis of Accounting. Um, this opinion paragraph pretty much says that the highest and cleanest opinion we're allowed to give the city, we did give the city for that 2021 calendar year. Um, further on down in this section, we discuss management and the council's responsibilities for these financial statements and then our responsibilities as well for these financial statements. Flipping forward to page four, this is called the Summary Statement of Receipts, Expenditures, and Unencumbered Cash. Here you'll see all of the funds of the city in the left-hand column. Uh, beginning cash, receipts, expenditures, and then ending cash. Down at the very bottom of that right-hand column, you'll see total cash on hand of the city and the library combined at 1231.21, which was about $17.5 million. Um, one metric we look at over cash balances is to see if the city um, meets kind of standard recommendations by the Government Finance Officers Association for cash balances. Um, and that standard is about three months of expenditures um, on average to have in cash. Um, and the city actually exceeds that standard recommendation. Um, so again, that reflects very well on the financial and um, internal control management of the city for that time period. Flipping forward to page 5 through 12, this section is called the Notes to the Financial Statements. Um, here is uh, quite a bit of information is discussed, including information on the city's accounting policies, long-term debt information, CAPERS and KPNF retirement program information, among many other items. 
And then the um, next section forward in that uh, uh, copy that you have in your agenda packets is pages 13 through 49. And these are just more detailed breakouts of those funds that are presented on page four. Um, most of these sections have a comparison to the budget that was adopted for that fund for 2021. And um, one of the other metrics that we kind of look at is to make sure that all funds were within their budget authority for the 2021 year and all funds of the city that had a budget were within that budget authority. The final section for it is pages 50 through 57. This is called the single audit section. Anytime an entity um, receives and spends $750,000 or more of federal grant money, it's required to undergo a single audit. Page 50 of the report shows all of the federal expenditures of the city for the year. And then the bottom of page 52 says that we focused on the coronavirus state and local recovery funds uh, grant that the city received. This is also known as the ARPA grant. Um, and again, we issued an unmodified opinion on how that grant was administered by the city, which is, again, the highest and cleanest opinion we can give. So um, just wanted to recap. For the city's audit, we issued the highest and cleanest opinion. For that federal audit, we issued the highest and cleanest opinion, um, which reflects very well on how all entities, um, all um, operations of the city financial-wise were, were managed well by the city and the city staff. Uh, we had a good audit this year. Uh, Tilly and her staff took, took good care of us, so wanted to thank her for that as well. On a separate piece of paper, there was one audit recommendation for this um, audit, um, and we will check up on that recommendation when we do the audit next year. Um, so if you have any questions on any of that, please let me know. Very good. Nothing else? Super. Anything to be added by the citizens? Questions, concerns, comments? Other staff? Very good. We'll need to accept that by motion. I'd entertain a motion. Or questions, concerns? Mr. Yeah, we'll Mayor, need a motion to have yeah. on the floor. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to accept the 2021 audit. A second. So moved by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Mrs. Gurley. Questions, concerns, comments? We'll start down here with Mr. Stevens. You know how I am with numbers, and I really appreciate how wonderful you are. <laughs> Tilly, John, everybody, thank you. This is this is so reassuring every year. It's the, the way you're you're doing things, and uh, I I really can't say anything better than that. It's just great, and we we really appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. Very good. Seeing nothing else, vote please. Voting on a motion to accept the 2021 audit. Shannon? Yes. Long? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Wood? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Skip? Yes. Stevens? Yes. <laughs> motion passes. Very good. Great. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, moving on to the citywide signage project bed re rejection. Amber Vogan, Assistant City Manager. We had um, the signage project go out for bid. I'm, I think um, you all are aware of ev everything that went through with the signage project. We had a Landwork Studio do the Parks Master Plan. They had um, a mock-up of one of the park signs and to make all of the signs throughout the city uh, look cohesive, we had them do a project where they redesigned all of the, park, all of the signs throughout the city. Um, that went to our city engineer who put together a bid packet. The original cost estimate from Landworks design was 154,000, a little over 154,000. The city engineer before the project went out for bid updated the estimate because costs have gone up. Um, his estimate was 195,000, a little over that. And we received one bid that came in and thousands of companies received this um, through Drexel Technologies, it's who we send all of our street programs, all of our public works programs go through Drexel. It also gets posted on our website and in the newspaper. So one bid was 
651,500. Um, there's a breakdown in the packet of how much that is per sign. Uh, we don't have that in the budget this year, and even if we did, I wouldn't recommend spending that much on this project. Um, we have budgeted 194,000, a little bit over 194,000 for the project. Um, I think what we'll do is break it up into pieces. So this first phase, um, I've taken the wayfinding signs, I've sent it out to a few sign contractors, they gave us some quotes, and to manufacture all of those signs, all seven of those signs, um, it came in between three and 7,000 as opposed to the 9,500 for one in this other bid. Um, so moving forward, I think we'll do the wayfinding signs first, that'll leave about 190,000 for the parking gateway signs. The next step would be the park signs, and then ultimately the gateway signs, which will take a little bit more, and we may need a general contractor for that one, but um, breaking it up into smaller packages will allow smaller companies instead of general contractors to bid. Very good, thank you. Anything from the citizens? Questions, concerns? Seeing none, other staff? Very good, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to reject the bid received from Mega KC for citywide signage project. Second. So moved by Mr. Shannon and seconded by Mrs. Long. Questions, concerns, comments? We'll start down here. Um, I, when you first started off, uh, you gave three rates or something there. I couldn't understand which, what is the first part you're going to do on the signs? The first phase will be the wayfinding signs. So these are kind of similar to a regular traffic sign in material and size. Um, and there's seven of those that will go up throughout the city to provide directional signage for okay. people to find their way to City Hall or the library or high school. Um, there's currently one up on 134th and Kansas. Yes. That is an older one that will be replaced. And so it'll be several of those throughout the city. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any opinion at all on why we did not receive anything but any no other bids but one and of course extremely I'm not sure why we didn't receive more than one um, I, I did reach out to this company to kind of find out if there was a material that's gone up significantly in price or if there was something in our documents that was unique that made it mm -hmm. cost more and I didn't Gold leaf around the edge yes. or something. Yes, um, <laughs> but there there wasn't anything that stood out to them. Um, it takes you by the hand and walks you to where you're <laughs> um, They this was a general contractor and they did um, partner with a smaller sign company to do some of the work. Um, but as far as why we only received one, I'm the, sure. is the installation the primary portion of it, or is it the actual sign itself? For these wayfinding signs, it would just be the materials and everything to make the sign. Um, our staff is going to actually install them, so it doesn't take a lot for those. Um, the other signs are really aluminum cases, and some of them have footings. The most significant one is the one over by the industrial park because it's so much taller due to the dip in the ground um, to be able to see. But those gateway signs are the ones that might need a little bit of grading or lighting associated with them. But other than that, they're fairly standard So signs. is the intent then to call next summer, um, put it out for bid again then? Um, the park signs, I think I'll do as the next phase um, and kind of keep the like signs together so that... But you'll put them out for bid. But yes, yeah, we'll put them out for bid. Um, and then if we're able to do the gateway signs as phase three within the same year for what we have budgeted, then we'll do that. Anything else? Nope. Seeing none, vote please. Voting on a motion to reject the bid received from Mega KC for the citywide signage project. Wood? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Kip? Yes. Long? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. On to item number three, a charter ordinance concerning a home rule ordinance <laughs> relating to the creation of code enforcement and administrative penalty process. 
This is um, the same process that we brought forward to you last year, the administrative citation process. This will allow us to put it on the taxes, uh, the, the um, property taxes if it's not paid, or go through our set-off program or any other legal means. We added that in just in case there's other opportunities that came about for us to collect those citations, we could um, use those as well. Very good. Uh, any questions, concerns from citizens? Seeing none other staff? Very good. I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to adopt a home rule ordinance relating to the creation of a code enforcement administrative penalty process. Second. So moved by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Mr. Thompson. Um, questions, concerns, comments, and we'll start right here. No, I don't have any. Okay. If it's tacked on to the tax, uh, property taxes, is that then collected on the next renewal, or is it held out till they sell the property? Do we get that money? We would when it's paid. It would be on their following property tax bill. If they pay it, then we get it. If they don't, then it stays until it's sold or go to auction. Refresh my memory just a little bit. I'm sure we went through this when we passed this back in last year, but um, that $5,000 match, mm -hmm. is that the total of all the citations or any, uh, as the citations go up, they get up to a point where they hit 5,000? Right, so if one property has five violations, it's per violation. Well, no, but I mean, if they get a, they get a series of violations, uh -huh. is it when those violations total 5,000 or as they go up in price, they can't exceed 5,000 any individual citation. Right, um, they, they wouldn't be able to exceed 5,000. So once they hit that, then. So it could be, they could actually be citations out there for 45, uh, let's say $9,000. Because you'd be having all those build up. Like That's what I'm trying to ask. In other words, is, that max, is it a maximum $5,000 amount? Is it cumulative? So. The um, first one's 150, mm -hmm. the second one's 250, the third one's 350, and if you add those together, you have $700, um, But Basically, if you summarize them, sum them all up, the total of all those can't yes. exceed 5,000? Correct, okay. per violation, sorry. Right. Per, violation. per violation. But it doesn't have to get that high for us to add it to the property no, 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 tax. No, but I, just, I was just curious on that 5,000 max, if it was per any particular single citation not going up but uh, whether it's the total up, yeah. of all the citations for that particular yeah. violation it's the total yeah. and it says here uh, 100 dollars increases by increments of 100 dollars for each successive violation with a maximum violation penalty of five thousand mm -hmm. dollars so the uh, so maximum yeah. viol so maximum yeah. penalty of five thousand dollars it's not like they can't pay more than five thousand total yeah other questions, concerns, starting over here? No, nothing else? Seeing nothing else, uh, with a charter ordinance, do we need to have a higher number of people vote for this, or? <laughs> I think we, as long as we have a quorum. Quorum? I didn't know if it was six out of the eight, okay. Vote, please. I'm sorry, you're right, Mayor, because you vote on charter ordinances, so we do have a higher number. Just, That's what you were getting just, at. Just, just wondering. Okay. <laughs> not my first rodeo. The balloons are going to come down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not my first rodeo. <laughs> so we're voting on a motion to adopt a home rule ordinance relating to the creation of a code enforcement administrative penalty process. Shannon? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Long? Yes. Kip? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Wood? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Mm. <laughs> Motion passed. Amber, why is it called a home rule ordinance? Home rule is the um, authority that cities have to be able to um, create these new processes as long as state statute doesn't say that we can't. Um, it's something that we can put in place to govern our city. 
does expanding on or somehow changing the state guidance? No, it's just um, okay. adding a process that's not there right now. Okay. We have several charter ordinances and uh, they're very useful for us to have our own uh, our own way of doing things. Very good. On to our reports this evening, the first of which is the city manager's report. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I just want to point out in uh, the city manager report, there is a survey um, link to District 7 for Wyandotte County Unified Government. Um, some of you may have received a survey um, the last, oh, I want to say in the last six months um, from the Unified Government with specific questions about county services as well as um, uh, city services depending upon where you live. So District 7 is what encompasses Bonner Springs um, as well as some additional areas, but that um, survey link is available to you. If there's any specific questions, I'm in the process of trying to weed through Bonner Springs specifically um, just to see what, uh, what comes out of that. I, I have been able to kind of get through some of that minutia, but um, and in seeing that we do have some positive uh, increases uh, streets as an example um, has been kind of a big focal point for the for the council for the last several years in terms of budgeting and what we've been doing on the street program so that continues to uh, increase as far as satisfaction uh, is concerned so there's a few other things um, you know and there's obviously some some things that we can work on as well so um, I think all in all Bonner Springs proper had about 150 people fill out the survey uh, which is statistically viable. I think the margin of error is about 8%. Um, so again, it, it's a good survey. Um, information's out there if you want to look at it. But again, um, trying to work through that. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, did want to thank everybody um, for a successful weekend in Bonner Springs. Uh, there's a lot of events going on. Um, Farmer's Market obviously opening, uh, I think was a, a good success. Uh, I believe somebody had a clicker there, uh, making sure uh, the number of people that were coming through, um, that with the Maker's Fair, uh, I think brought a lot of people into the community and, and obviously a lot of effort by city staff. Um, gave an excuse for Captain Krause to get out on the bike, uh, as well as Sergeant Tate. So um, again, look forward to more and more of those uh, activities and events uh, in downtown. And then lastly, just wanted to um, bring up, as, as you all are aware, um, the city did award a street um, preservation um, reconstruction resurfacing um, project in the last oh, month or so. Um, that work is uh, started. Um, we do have some additional money available from what was budgeted um, versus what came back on the contracted side. So. Um, we are looking at adding some additional roadways through that based off the price per quantity that we got for uh, just our mill and overlay. Um, so if everybody's all right with that, we'll be going up to um, try to capture as much money as, uh, or rather streets that we can given the amount of budget that we had. Um, the only caveat on that is we, we still do have the reclamite, which is that uh, as Mr. Beats has put it, the suntan lotion that goes on the asphalt to help it stay, uh, you know, stay in good uh, repair longer. Um, so that's 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 coming down the pike. But um, the reason I bring this up tonight is that we do have obviously the contractor here. Um, they'll be here for about two weeks, so we've got to kind of get with them and, and um, say we need to work through this. So uh, if you're all right with that, what I plan to do is come back with a change order. Um, after the work is probably done, given our, our time frame here, um, again, I think we've got some streets that have that we know need to get done. There's also some pole depth patching that I know we want to get um, taken care of on some of our uh, outlying roads um, as well. So, again, if, if everybody, if there's no concern with doing that, we'll just try to proceed with that way. Uh, again, knowing that we're still within our within our budgeted amount. Other than that, um, if there's any concerns with that, please let me know. But that is all I have this evening. Very good. 
Uh, we'll start uh, right down here with city council items. Sir, uh, Sean, um, you mentioned going through the questionnaire. <clears throat> Having looked at it, um, that was the thing I was most concerned about, is to what directly applied to Bonner Springs. Is there any recommendation, or do you want me to uh, talk with you specifically privately or something? No. Um, you know, I what think, do you recommend for us? Yeah, I think one of the issues that I've expressed to the UG staff on that particular survey is it doesn't make clear necessarily um, a delineation of city services. So if you're getting a question from the unified government about the city services that you're receiving, how are you answering that question if you live in Bonner Springs or Edwardsville? I think that's, that's, that's more of a recommendation in future years with that survey to say maybe clean up the language and say that specifically uh, on the onset or maybe do it in tandem with the cities and we can all put our little logos on there and, and go about it together. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm not going to, I don't think we're going to make any brash decisions based off of this survey, but I think it does give us a little bit of a, uh, of a tool in the uh, tool shed as far as here's some more information that we've got that allows us to look at our initial survey we did a couple of years ago and, and see whether or not we've, we've seen uh, uh, increases or decreases in sort of service satisfaction. So I think I share your concerns, you know, exactly how viable that is. Um, to us given where that instrument originated from, which is the unified government, not the city of Bonner Springs. Um, but that being said, it's, again, it's a, it's a tool. It might not necessarily be the right tool, but, um, you know, having a, I'm, I'll leave the analogies aside. So, yeah. <laughs> um. I don't think uh, I could ever get tired of saying thank you to the police department, fire department, the EMTs, the city staff, the employees, uh, these audits. Tell you, you just keep hitting home runs every year. I hope you don't get tired of all of y'all get tired of us saying thank you uh, for what y'all do. Sean and Amber, everybody, thank you. First of all, I agree with him and thank you. <laughs> Now, I have gotten a, a, a letter from um, a, you know, a resident, concerns raised about 11845 Call Drive. Um, he says in it that uh, he'd like to clarify the fact that uh, all industrial, there are several very conscientious industrial business owners along K32, and there are others that aren't, and he named a few that aren't. And now he's concerned about 11845 Call Drive. Uh, it's the area that's having the fence put around it right now, and it looks just fine. He says that the zoning ordinance, nothing over six feet tall, can be stored outside, which would preclude shipping containers. He's worried about us becoming to look more like places in other areas around us where there's uh, overgrowth and things left outside and shipping containers that are very high. So I've shared this with Sean and another person also on the council got this. So I want us to look at that very yep, carefully. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Yep. I just kind of want to refresh my own memory on the, the Midwest bus building. If I remember right, they're maintaining ownership of that building. Yeah, they're the current okay. owners of it right now. Yep. And that they were putting a certain amount of improvement money into it. There What's was, the future of that space is where I'm going. Um, the, the agreement that they had in place initially for um, their incentives, if I can loosely use that term, um, was that if they made a, a certain in investment in that facility, they would get an additional abatement at their new facility. They have not met that. Um, that so they haven't received the abatement yet. Correct. They, they, they have received an abatement, but they haven't received that the additional, that additional abatement. abatement for the investment at their former uh, facility. And it's timed out? No. I believe it's 20, 2025. 
is what, until oh, wow. they, yeah, so they've got a little bit of time. The, the, the caveat to that is the sooner they would have made that investment in that facility, that would have activated their abatement. So their end date is still the same. But the abatement is not retroactive. Right, right, right. right. Um, so again, that was, that was the general structure of that agreement was there were triggers that would allow for, for additional abatement. Um, there was another, there was other areas as well that they could have made investment, but uh, nevertheless, um, ironically, um, I have been having some good conversations with um, the Kincaid group about that particular location. Uh, I can tell you they do have um, a lot of people interested, like everywhere it seems, um, to buy the property. Um, they also own property north of um, their facility in the industrial park as well. So um, the only thing I can, uh, I'll say about it is that they are working with city staff to try to coordinate a uh, repurposing of that site that would fit um, sort of the overall vision of the city. Uh, one item that I've pointed them to is the Tri-City Plan that called out kind of that Oh, typical kind of urban idea of bringing structures closer to the sidewalk, making it more walkable, um, so on and so forth. So, uh, again, there's been some open dialogue with them about what's going to go on at the future of that site, just trying to coordinate that. Um, but they do know more than likely any anything that we're talking about or that has been talked about to date will require rezoning. So that will be you know, public public hearings requirements, signs posted, uh, the whole shebang. So there'll, there'll be the opportunity to get some public input about that as well. Thank you. Well, Sean, I should have sent you something earlier, but the, on the Compass Project, they were concerned again about the silt fence being on the top of that pond and not on the bottom of the dam. Does that make sense? And I don't know if there's a guideline that says it should be there or shouldn't, it should be at the top or the bottom, but they were, they were worried that it should be down and not up. Okay. So um, I don't know what's ordinance or called, but if you could look at that. I yep, I will do that. Other than that, thank you, uh, everyone. Just going to mention real quickly that, uh, yes, I was down there Saturday, and it was quite active. It was, it was wonderful to see downtown just really bustling with a lot of activity, a lot of individuals. Uh, my wife did stop by the, uh, the place with the wine, and I instructed her that the Winefield chocolates that she bought, she could not open those on the street and start eating those. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd mention that. So. Container from my boat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. Well, great. Thank you all. I uh, appreciate all the, the uh, input this evening. I would also like to thank and compliment everyone that participated in the Maker's Fair and Farmer's Market this last weekend the Lions Club Pancake Day and the Rotary uh, Kentucky Derby uh, fundraiser. Um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on in Bonner Springs, and it seemed like it all happened on the one day of spring. Um, <laughs> so the cold weather that we had before uh, limited, you know, being able to plant a lot of things outside. Now we're finally able to do that, and um, hopefully everyone will – Stay out of the heat. Yeah, if we go from winter to summer and nothing in between, that's usually the way it is here in Bonner Springs, or Kansas anyway. Um, first question I had is, um, I didn't really come up during the data part today, but have we been impacted by the data breach in Wyandotte County? Um, city operations, city function. Yeah. Is well, yeah, we'll, we'll just say we have. Been. Emergency services primarily? Yeah, I'd say emergency services, uh, we have had, I don't think we've had any delay in tax receipts or anything to date. Have District we? court. Yeah. One thing, um, since I brought it up previously that I'm still trying to get a hold of is what our estimated valuations for the city are supposed to be um, to help facilitate that conversation uh, given our uh, tight time frames we're on. So um, short answer to your question, yes. Yes, we're yes, impacted, we but all right. We're persevering. Um, 
the swimming pool had uh, a, a nice opportunity to have lunch with the National Honor Society at the Chamber luncheon this last week, and I sat with um, one of the, um, sorry, I forget her name, but uh, either managers or lifeguards at the swimming pool. The swimming pool is on schedule to open when? Is it the 20... Last weekend, yeah, twenty eighth. I was gonna say twenty ninth. Yeah. Right around that. They were doing weekend. some painting. I think they were getting ready to fill it. Uh, if they haven't already, I think they were trying to do that this week. Um, so yeah, everything's a go for. Um, I know we've done a lot of work on the pump and the filtration system, and yep, that has all been complete. Uh, I think they were gonna fill it and and kind of run through some of those mm -hmm. things just to make sure everything is is good to go. So uh, the next two weeks should be eventful there. Yeah, <laughs> yes, very much. That'll be great. Uh, the water plant, is it coming along or the? Yep, um, so we're having uh, weekly meetings at this point um, going through. I think we're probably about 30 days or so out. Um, big thing right now is assembling contracts and getting that all, all squared away. We were approved through KDHE to increase our loan amount. Um, we know it's going to be more than what we anticipated, like everything in the world. Um, so that was approved. What we are still working through is some of the um, federal funding that came through. There seems to be some, um, oh, there's ongoing conversations with the state about how to um, utilize that funding and, and get it. Um, at this point, some of the, the initial funding is a use it or lose it type of scenario for the state. So we'd be happy to take it. Um, so again, the, there's, there's a lot still going on, but we're about 30 days or so out from kind of finalizing that whole package. Very good. Uh, speaking of federal funding, um, I noticed a, uh, something from Wyandotte County about ARPA funds that they're releasing, or do we have information on that? Um, not that I'm aware of. I was asked to participate, they have a subcommittee uh, of different folks through the UG that have been looking at programming or, or uh, reviewing how they're spending their, their ARPA money for the county and the city. Um, so we did give some initial suggestions to that. Edwardsville was also asked to participate in that. I haven't heard anything to date with what they were planning to do with any of our input. Um, I believe they did open up and I, I believe I put it maybe in the city manager report as well, was uh, opening up for not-for-profits to seek out funding in Wyandotte County. Um, so there is an opportunity um, for folks to submit to the UG under the county auspice uh, for some ARPA funding as well. But yeah, more to come, I think, on that as well. I saw mentioned there's a, a small business uh, grant program. They have funded it with $150,000 of ARPA funds and it's a maximum of $15,000 per grant. So that could be either 10 or many more, I guess. So, yep. And I just saw that. I don't have a lot of information on it. I really appreciate all the development work that's gone on in Bonner Springs. The city's been very active in that. Uh, it is, um, with bated breath, we await uh, Old Dominion getting uh, that area, their area completed, as well as the development of that those additional commercial area up there north of the old Burger King Goodwill, which is uh, slated to be a uh, new coffee shop, which uh, I think that close to the highway will be very rewarding for the city as well as the coffee shop. Um, but with Wilkerson and the um, Compass Center and the other projects that are on the board, um, I know how long it takes, and we appreciate all the effort that you put into it. I know it's very frustrating, Amber, John, Chris, the whole city staff. Um, th this is uh, a lot of things that are done behind the scenes, and, and we really appreciate it. I know the whole city does. And it's it are uh, issues that come along, and you'll see uh, some little bit of um improvement or something happening and it only alludes to the mountains and time that's been involved getting to that point so we sure appreciate things like a silt fence on top of a 
of a berm or a dam as opposed to the bottom are um, not to uh, minimize that, but are one aspect of an entire 40 acre project that's going on uh, here, as well as infrastructure with uh, high voltage power lines and things of that, that we have the opportunity to welcome to our city. Um, it's all it's all very, very welcomed and thank you very much. And uh, if anyone has any questions concerning any of those programs, I point you to the city staff. They're much more knowledgeable of it than I am. Um, I had the honor of attending the Wyandotte Johnson County Council on Mayors meeting this last uh, last week. Um, it uh, we heard um, the speaker was um, Mayor Clint Quentin Lucas from Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, it was very um, uh, encouraging to hear that uh, Kansas City, Missouri is still invested in uh, cooperating together with the cities in um, Kansas and uh, moving away from the old border war and moving towards a more cooperative environment. And he, he made mention of it as well as many of the, um, the mayors, uh, especially along state line so that was encouraging to hear I'm looking forward to um, hosting that group here uh, in the first part of June so uh, that's exciting we'll have mayors from all over Wyandotte and Johnson County here to uh, um, look at our new facility uh, the uh, award-winning facility so um, the city war uh, city received a capstone award from the Kansas City Business Journal uh, concerning adaptive reuse of facilities. And this, uh, this is a perfect example of that. And so uh, I know I, we are uh, getting used to this facility. Uh, and we've, we've been in it quite a while, and we, we know all the little nuances and some of the um, labors of love that it's taken to get going like it is. But uh, it, it is really surprising to me that people will for whatever reason, they have to come into the city hall, uh, do whatever business, come and go, and they'll, they regard it as just normal. They don't realize what all we've been through to get to this point. And uh, it's a hundred year old building and the uh, historic nature of it and the aspects of that. So um, I'm very proud of it. I'm looking forward to hosting those, uh, the mayors from the rest of our community, around our community. So uh, I'm just uh, very thankful. I stand for any questions. If anyone has any questions for me this evening, council, seeing none, we're adjourned.